what up hey how you guys doing um so i decided to go live because i guess i was just talking too much <laughs> so let me guys tell you guys my story might as well just put it all out there so first of all thank you so much for everybody opening your hearts to me and letting me in on your deepest like concerns and love and it's just everything you guys asked for it like i totally get where you guys are coming from because i miss my people so much i miss my father i miss my you know aunts and uncles and my primos and my my grandparents like i miss everybody and i totally get how it is to like want to see them again and i understand i you know you guys want your own homes you guys want you guys want uh your families to be happy you guys you're you guys want the you know the struggle to go away and i get it because i mean i i've gone through shit like that i go through shit like that like ain't nobody perfect like i totally fucking get where you guys are coming from so thank you so fucking much for interacting with me opening up your hearts and letting me in and letting me know how you guys like feel and i'm so fucking down for that and now let me tell you guys what i was telling you guys earlier the um, that one comment the homegirl said when i said if you have anything if you could have anything one thing you want what would it be she said a better body and i totally get it because a lot of great guys and girls wish they could look better and stuff like that and i totally get it but at the end of the day as long as you're good in your heart and in your mind and your soul and you're confident that's what makes you a beautiful person of course nowadays with, so with uh, social media and society how it is you got to have big tits big ass and hard abs you know i get it you know even the guys they got to have hard abs and they got to be perfect whatever i totally fucking get it and but that's what kind of crushes our soul and crushes our minds and everything to like not feel confident and i totally get it like i ain't gonna lie i told her yeah i get i gained about 50 fucking pounds and that's a lot of fucking weight for me you don't see it that much on me because i'm big bone so i've always been big bone and plus i always worked out a lot and i joined sports since i was like a kid since like i was able to play sports i've been playing sports and uh after my baby i didn't even gain no weight when i had my son like i gained no weight at all all like the only fucking weight i gained was when he his weight my son's weight that's all i gained other than i gained no weight after i fucking had my son i was fine everything was cool and then i hit a moment of depression and i've never said this but i'm I'm gonna i'm putting it out there now like i hit a depression moment for a good year and that's how i gained about 50 fucking pounds fuck me dude and my depression i dealt with it by fucking eating and i overate so fucking much and when i was done eating i hated myself for it because i was like fuck dude like why'd you do that like you should know better like you should like talk to somebody or figure shit out or whatever but i didn't i turned to food and that's what i did so whatever whatever the fuck ever <laughs> so since then i've lost maybe about 10 pounds or whatever and good i'm glad i'm not trying to look good i just don't like to be this heavy because it's hard for me when um, i'm performing and like i'm breathing and it's like i'm gasping for air or whatever so it is what it is <laughs> so that's why i'm trying to fix that so i don't have to worry about that shit and uh and like everybody like everybody hits you know shit like that and my depression was only it was honestly it was because of the fucking this game this industry it's so fucking hard sometimes. Like, it's, I'm not even, like, on Nicki Minaj or J-Lo status. And it already affects me, like, now. But it's because when you have so much heart and love for something, you give it your all. And sometimes when you do, shit don't go right. Then you start, like, feeling like a failure and whatever. But I try not to take it there. I try to keep moving forward. I try to um, acknowledge the fact that shit's gonna happen and that you know sometimes shit isn't meant to be feel me or sometimes it is i don't know like i i, I do what i do and i love what i do <laughs> oh god <laughs> uh, <clears throat> i love what i fucking do all right, I work fucking hard at everything I do, and sometimes for some reasons, whatever shit happens, and I get it. Mm. Ah, <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Okay, <sighs> I make music because it's my heart. I love it. I love it. I love fucking doing it. I love performing. I love fucking being out there and. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. My dad put me on this when I was like three years old. <sighs> I 
my dad put me to, to do music when I was like three years old and I loved it and he was just like he he was known huge in the city of East Los Angeles everybody knew my dad like in the radio stations TV shows um fucking everything like everybody knew my dad and I was always with them like I, I was like I carried his cameras I carried his you know <laughs> back then when I was little fucking he had those video cameras where it's like the huge ass camera you wear on your fucking shoulders. And then <laughs> you carry like a bag. It has like a VHS like on the side. And that like would record everything. Like so old school, right? And I would always be the one walking around with this fucking VHS bag so he could film. And uh, and uh, being around the entertainment industry and seeing everything. It's just it kind of like I, I grew to it and I moved to it, you know? And uh, that's what made me like keep coming and, and start doing this. And I remember that right before he, uh, I remember like right, be right before he passed away, he, uh, I had recorded my first uh, mixtape, right? I recorded my first mixtape and um, I let him hear it. And it was funny because I remember when I first recorded something, I didn't even know what the fuck I was doing. I didn't know what bars were. I didn't know where... I didn't even know how to write shit. I was just like, whatever. And um, the point is that I recorded something and and, and it was on a CD. It was on a, on a regular blank CD, right? And uh, I gave it to my dad and I told listen, listen. And, uh, he heard it and he was so fucking happy. He was like, fuck, you're so... He's like, wow, you're on a CD. Like, it was not even a real CD. <laughs> it was just like a burned fucking CD disc. And he's like, wow, I can't believe it. Like, that's so cool. And even though I was cussing all over him and all kinds of shit. Like, he, it doesn't even matter to him. The, it just, he just liked it. The fact that he heard me. He heard me on a CD. And then it just made it brought up his life. I remember I used to do talent shows and all kinds of shit like that in school. And he would always be at every talent show. He would always be at all my recitals. He would be at everything I did. And there's standing there filming me all the time you know so that just made me like it made me proud and i was like you know what this is my place this is where i need to be i need to be on stage i need to be doing my shit and everything and for and i got and that was it now i wasn't trying to get into the music industry now please understand there was a time where i was just low writing and getting into trouble just bullshitting whatever and i should have known better because at, by the time i lost my father it was just me and my mom and i should have fucking got my shit straight but i didn't i just kept fucking around and whatever so, uh, well, um, one day, um, that tape that I mixed it, that I recorded, I just got out there, and, um, Johnny Yu, well, actually, my boy, Doughboy, who used to hang out with Slow Pain, Little Demon, and everybody from, um, Old Town Mafia, came up to me, he's like, dude, you sound fucking dope as fuck, let me take you to the show, uh, Johnny Yu is gonna be performing Southside, and come through, alright, cool, I went, and I showed up, and I started doing the song, and everybody saw me, Slow Pain song, and everybody just had, like, wow, they fucking loved it. And Johnny, you hit me up, and he's just like, uh, yo, man, let's sit down and, um, chop it up. He's like, I wanna, uh, uh, let's talk about some music. And I was like, well, I don't really rap. He's just like, let's just meet up. I was like, all right, cool. So I went, I sat down, and I met up with him. And I met up with him, we sat, we read, and that day, at the, that night at the dinner, he's like, yo, I wanna put out your first album. I'm like, homie, I don't fucking rap, yo. I don't rap, that's not my shit. He's like, but you sound so good. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, nah, thanks, but anyway. So he took his checkbook out, and he wrote me a check for $2,500. And at that time, I was just like, you wanna give me this? in exchange for me to do some music and he was like yeah i was like fuck it <laughs> so i took the fucking check i took the fucking check and i wrote with it and i put out my first album and when i put out my first album oh uh, it was the middle when um when my dad got sick and uh you know unfortunately he passed and i didn't get a chance to hear him hear it but at least he heard the first one anyways and then i did my music and it wasn't until i met some fucking people that put me on game and I got to work with the dopest fucking people, the dopest producers and everything. And then I had a fucking single, yo. I had a badass single out there called Do It Daddy. And that's just my record. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. That record is my fucking record. And it had hits and it was dope as fuck. And then my fucking so-called soldiers fell on me, gotcho. They fucking fell on me, gotcho. Right when fucking Power was gonna pick it up and Kiss FM was gonna pick it up and all these stations were gonna pick it up and my single was hitting number fucking one everywhere. These motherfuckers ran me the fuck down and I felt like I lost my fucking place. 
So because of that hard grind and work and everything and because the fact that I felt like I was almost already there and these fuckers just ran me down is the reason why I'm still here because of my dad and because the fact that just knowing the fact that I was already there and I got pushed back is the reason why I still do what I love to do the most it's fucking hard as fuck but I don't give up and I'm still here and I fucking grind hard and 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 I don't want nobody to feel sorry for me okay please don't 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 oh dolly don't worry no 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 I'm sharing with you guys a moment a reason why I hit depression and why the fuck I feel the way I do so you you guys opened it to me so I'm opening it up to you and know the fact that I'm not going anywhere I'm gonna continue doing my music I'm gonna keep fucking grinding keep fucking pushing and it is you know it is what it is like I said at the end of the day my music's not meant for everybody I fucking know that I don't expect every fucking person in this world to butt my shit because everybody has different tastes cool I get it so I just do music for the people who are honest, who really buy my music, who are there for me, for me, and understand that they can relate to whatever I put out there, you know. And but when you work so hard sometimes, and and, and you don't get back the feedback that you you think you're gonna get, and shit just starts falling, this industry will chew you the fuck. Out, <laughs> they will chew you and take you out, spit you out so fucking fast your head will spin. And this is why sometimes it's hard for me, and this is why sometimes you guys don't hear me all the time. And sometimes this is why I don't put on music all the fucking time, or you know, videos too. Shit, videos ain't cheap, you know. Yeah, I get homie hookups here and there, but I mean, you gotta pay for everything. I don't gotta label paying for my shit. No one pays for my shit. No one pays for a recording. No one pays for my fucking production. No one fucking pays for nothing. I fucking pay for all my shit. That's a real grind. That's a real hustle. That's a real blood, sweat, and tears. Not the people that fucking just show up and fucking everything's paid for. Just go record. Nah, nah, nah. I don't do shit like that. I do shit on my own so when people start telling me i can't do this i can't do that oh poor me but like yo do this do that like come on man like fucking go to school i got a family to take care of i got a fucking i got a toddler i gotta work uh, on my music i gotta fucking do homework <laughs> i uh i still have to work on my designs for my for my website because i want to put new shit out like, there's so much shit. If I could do all this shit, yo, you can make time to do shit yourself, too. So don't nobody say you can't do it. And if you feel like you're going to hit hard like I hit hard, you just can't give up. I woke up. Yeah, I gained 50 pounds. Fucking, it is what it is, you know? And now I have to work to get myself back to when, where I need to be. Physically, mentally, and my soul. And I'll be okay. I know I'll be fine. And I know my dad's look watching over me. And I know he's giving me that strength. And I know... <sighs> I know that no matter what, shit's gonna pop regardless. Whether I'm making this game or not, I'm happy. I've been to Japan. I've been up and down the U.S. Like, I already had a single. I had a number one single. Like, I, I, I can't say, I can't walk away and be like, I'm, I'm, ah, fuck this. I didn't do anything. I, I put myself on the map. I was the first, after JV, I was the first fucking female solo artist out there. And I'm not talking about Baby Wig. Baby Wig has been doing her shit too. Much props to her. She, she was with a group. I'm talking about solo fucking artists. I've been out here since day one. I was the one pushing and doing my shit. And I, and, and because of that, I always, don't take what I do for fucking granted, you know? I never fucking take nothing for fucking granted. I never bite the fucking hand that feeds me. Never. And I definitely, definitely tell myself I deserve this and much fucking more. Especially when I'm coming out of the pocket and I'm doing all my own shit. That's 100. And I've always been 100 fucking G certified. I don't give a fuck. You could ask anybody. I put in fucking work in the streets. I've done what I have done. And I didn't say shit about it. Neither do I fucking talk about it. Neither do I show off about it. Nothing. I keep that shit G and solid one fucking hundred. So when I start there's a shit popping off that just like what the fuck you gotta understand sometimes it's gonna push a motherfucker off and that's gonna be like what the fuck just happened <laughs> you know other than that i love you guys so fucking much i appreciate you guys opening up to me like we did on my storyline and i and i i did i i uh i uh I answer back each each dm that was sent to me on the storyline a lot of you guys uh hit me up on my dm I haven't got to that yet, but I will. I will, okay? So, in due time, remember, I got a lot of the shit going on, too. <laughs> Sorry for breaking down. I tried, I was trying not to cry. I was holding it in. Posture.
bring it, bring it back, bring it back. And I'm back. <laughs> and at the end of the day, don't worry about your physical appearance. Don't worry about what the fuck is going on. Just try to bring it together and make it happen. Other than that, los quiero mucho. Mwah! I feel better. I vented. <laughs> but a lot of you guys who've been following me for years know my path too. But this is the first time I opened up about my whole depression that I hit about a year ago. And it goes in and out sometimes. But I'm okay right now. I'm okay. And that's all that matters. Feel me? But los quiero mucho. Mm, you already know. You are, and, I, and at the end of the day, I'm still, yes, I'm going to plan a tour. And it's going to come out of my own pocket. But I cannot... And it's just really like reality, like, like literally, literally. I cannot hit none of these cities if I don't have, I guess, the numbers and all that shit going. So y'all want me to come out? I'm fucking down, but we need to tag, like, and support, and repost. It's this is the only way it's gonna happen. You guys know I'm not making this shit up. Everybody knows this is the only way nowadays shit's gonna pop. You need to have those fucking numbers up, and shit needs to pop in order to fucking happen. But. I'm gonna bring this shit on my own. I'm gonna make this shit happen. And I'm gonna fucking bring it to the table. No matter the fuck what. No matter the fuck what. I'm gonna do this shit. And I'm gonna do it by myself. And uh, I'm gonna be out there. Out there. <laughs> I love you guys. And nos vemos pronto. Have a beautiful day. And talk to you later. Bye.